Uh, good evening, church. I pray all has been well. I pray the last word, I mean, the what last word from the Lord been a blessing to you. And I pray um, that um, this word that he give today be a blessing to you. But before we do that, let's reverence the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, uh, bless us with your presence, Lord. Uh, bless, us, bless us with your guidance, Lord. Remove every yoke, every burden, Lord. Remove anything, remove anything, Lord, that would disconnect us from you in this hour, Lord. Thank you for preserving your word for us, Lord Jesus. Set us free from the bondage of our heart, Lord, by, by giving us a revelation of truth, which is you, Lord. Lord, reveal yourself to us, Lord. Purge our hearts, Lord. Forgive us of our pride, our vanity. Forgive us for the lust that lead us astray, Lord. Lord, forgive us for every area that we fall short, Lord. Thank you for your grace, Lord. And thank you for your mercy. For you are worthy to be, for you are worthy to be praised, Lord. And Lord, we pray that we give help us, Lord, and to give us your undivided attention, Lord. Lord, 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 I pray that we give you. Excuse me, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we give you our undivided attention, Lord. Speak, Lord, and set us free by the grace of your word. Lord God, we love you so, so much, and we need you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Well, church, let's dive in this word, man, and 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 uh and getting it. The Lord showed a vision, man, and a lot of vision that He revealed. He'll use me as an example in the vision, man. And and I'm being honest, man. He whenever man, one thing I love about the Lord, man, if you truly follow the Lord, man, when man, man, he would not, man, he would not, he would not, man, let you be a hypocrite, man. Walking with the Lord, man, I'm telling you, man, that he I remember in scripture, man, how he some of the people that would speak for the Lord, man, he would make them use as a, use them as an example. He'll make them sleep on one side. Even if they giving a message to the people, he'll break them first. And man, the Lord will use me as an example in some of these visions, and it'll scare me like, man, Lord. Lord, please <laughs> never let that be me, Lord. Because he will break, he break you first before you even speak to somebody. The Lord will break you first, man. To keep you in a humble place, man. Because, man, he said every man work out his salvation with fear and trembling, man. And some of these visions, he will use me as an example, man. And man, it'd be scary. I'd be thinking I'm in trouble, man. I'm like, whoo, Lord. Man. And man, I'm telling you, man, he's serious, man. He break us first, man. So church, in might of fact, when he returned, he coming to deal with us first, man. Because we know better, man. And uh man, I just uh, the vision that he give it's not about me and got it ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't care about a reputation. The vision that he give it's only it's for the church, man. It's for the church, man, and it's for us to prepare our hearts to be to go in love love toward Christ Jesus and be looking for his return, man. Because even the day I was talking to a, even today I was talking to a brother in the faith, he was taking me to pick up my truck, man. And and I was having a conversation. I was like, man, the Lord is drawing near. The Lord is drawing near. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, they've been saying that for a long time. And I was like, man, he was like, uh, uh, he was like, man, um, but we don't really know when you're going to come. I was like, man, yeah, you're right. Nobody know the day, no hour. But that's going to get a lot of people too, though. Because people think because the day the Lord delayed it coming because his grace because he don't want nobody to perish. We people take we 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 can take that for granted. Because we like, oh man, they've been saying that forever he's gonna return, man. They've been saying he's been close forever. And 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 we still wait. And see, people will take that for granted. And you know what, you know what, you know what's gonna happen? He gonna catch you with your pan down. Well, you're gonna think, oh man, I got time. Because when you think you got time, you get comfortable. He said, Oh, I got time. I got time, and he gonna come in an hour, and you don't know it, and see your shame, see our shame and nakedness if we're not preparing. And so he dropped it. So back to the story, man. We having this conversation, and I tell you, yeah, but that's how you gonna get a lot of people. Then right after that, I get out of the truck. I go in the inside of the shop to get my keys from my truck. I he dropped me off. I think he gone. I think I thought he was gone. So I get my keys. As soon as I walk up, he pop up. 
out of nowhere, I'm like, oh, man, whoa, hold up, man. I thought you was gone, man. He was like, no, man. I was like, I'm trying to help you look for your truck. I'm like, man. Now, we just had a conversation about how the Lord pop up. And the Holy Spirit spoke, the Holy Spirit spoke then. The Lord spoke through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit then. About how he popped up. Notice that I thought he was gone. I got my little keys for the go out and look, look for a truck. I thought he was gone. Then he popped up out of nowhere when I didn't even expect it. That's how I go be in the day of the Lord. We gonna think he gone. Is he gonna pop up? Man. He gonna pop up, man. And if we are prepared, man, he would catch us off guard, man. He said, blessed is the man that watched this, watch and keep his garment. So when I return, I won't see a shame in his nakedness. Just thought I would share that with your church. Now, let's go into the vision um, itself, man. We'll break it down in parts because, man, it is a long, it is a long vision, but, man, it is, man, it is heavy, man, and it's grieving, man. The Lord, don't nothing catch the Lord by surprise, but it is grieving, man, what the Lord is seeing in the earth. It's grieving what he's seeing, man, and he's going to deal with it. Man, man, I'm, man, it's serious, man, but let's, let's get started. Um, okay. I was in a vision. I was in a vision, and I woke up, and I asked my nephew, what time it is? And I was asking what time it was because I was trying to wake up. I was trying to make sure uh, I wake up the right time to go to work. So I wake up in the video and say, what time is it? And then he hold up his hand and do a sign language. He said, it's 4.50. He said, 4.50. I said, okay, I'm going to wake up 4.50. Okay, let's pause right there. The Lord break down what this wake up 4.50 means. He said, wake up. I know everything. I, God Almighty, knows everything. Now let's move further in the vision. Right after that, uh, right after that part of the vision, he showed a man that's a leader, a man that's a leader, um, that has a doctor on it, that has doctor on his name. And the and and the leader said, I can give you a physical every year. This is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord said. The Lord said, I am the doctor and I am examined. He said, and I have, ex I, he was said, and I am, and I have examined the heart of every man because I am the good shepherd. And I have spent time in my examining, says the Lord, inspecting and telling you the things you need to strengthen that remain that need to die before I return. And some of you have not listened. Man, that's scary, man. Because it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. He said, I am the doctor. And I have been examining the heart of every man because I am the good shepherd. And I have spent time in my examining. Man, says the Lord. Instructing and telling you the things you need to strengthen that remain before I return. And some of you have not listened. Let's move forward in the vision. Then in the vision, in the same vision, the Lord showed an old gym. And inside of the gym is two floors. And 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 in and, 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 and the second in the second floor, there's a hole where you can look down through the holes and see the, the suit and see the second floor. And then when you look through that hole, you see old basketball go basketball goals. And some of the basketball goals are up and some of the basketball goals are down. Right? And then inside and, and then on the second floor, a man came in and started fixing on the goals. The Lord broke down this. So let's let's let let's, 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 let's let me tell you what the Lord said about this gem. Okay. The Lord spoke by the Holy Spirit and revealed the matter of the vision. The Lord said, right, the Lord said, because notice on the top floor. And I was on the top floor and I can look down through the through the took through the second floor. And this is what the Lord is saying. He said, I am looking down in the earth at the people. The gold that was up and down represent the people, whether they are high and low, rich or poor. And the oldness of the goals represented the condition of the people. Right? The goals were high and low. The whole gym itself were old. So the, the Lord was showing that this represented the condition of the people, that all of them was in the same predicament. All of them was in the same condition. So the Lord was saying, whether you are high or low, rich or poor, 
You all need me. You all need to be made new to function in life, and that life is in me. Then the man that came in, in, in the gym and started fixing the goal is the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus said, I am making all things new. The old is passing away. The only way to enter into the kingdom of God is to put yourself, to put on your new self, which is my righteousness. And you only can do that by faith in me and by my spirit perfecting. Because noting, notice that the, the man downstairs, the Holy, Jesus said, that's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was fixing the goal because the Holy Spirit perfect, perfect us into the image of Christ Jesus. And the Lord, and the only way to receive the Holy Spirit is through faith by is through faith in Christ Jesus. Because those who believe in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit is poured out on them generously, generously. And he guides us and lead us and teach us everything that Christ Jesus has said and perfect us into the image of Christ Jesus. Right? And the Lord said, man, the only way to enter into the kingdom of God is to put on is to put on your new self, which is my righteousness, right? And which, because when he comes, we're going to be judged by his righteousness. So he said, the only way to make it into the kingdom of God is to put on your new self, which is my righteousness. And you only can do this by faith in me, by my spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Perfection. Perfecting us, man. Okay? Let's move forward. Now, right after this, man. This is serious, man. This is serious. Now, man, this is serious, man. This is very serious, man. And the Lord, man, he is very serious now. The Lord, uh, the Lord, man, this is grieving, man. This is grieving. And, 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 man, this grieved me. This grieved me so bad, man. And the, your, the Lord used me as a man in his vision, and it scared me. And it got my heart in a place that I would never be like this. And, and it's not because I'm strong. And it's not because I'm all this and all that. And it's not because none of us is all this and all that. Because we all can fall short. We all can fall uh, uh, We all can be led astray. The only way we will not fall short is if we obey the Spirit of God. Because if we don't, we will do this. If we don't obey the Holy Spirit, and if we don't have a genuine love for Christ Jesus, and if we don't humble ourselves and, and exalt Christ Jesus, we will fall to this place out of disobedience and not obeying the Spirit. Man, it scared me, man. Listen, listen, listen what the Lord said. He used me as an example in his vision, but I'm gonna break it down to you so you can so you can understand. And the Holy Spirit, man, man, listen to the church. Listen to this. The Lord showed a man, the, the Lord showed a man in the doctor office. And the people, the people, the, the, the Lord showed a man in the doctor's office. And the people inside of the doctor's office in the waiting room that was sitting down, they was paying. Um, this man inside of the doctor, doctor office the money, right? Now they was they, they, they was paying this man in the title of the doctor. They was writing checks to the man inside of the doctor office because they thought he was a pastor. You know? Now, and then the man accepted the money even though he knew he was not a pastor. And then he went inside. Then he went and he got inside of the car. His loved one, his loved one told him that his loved one told him that uh he could he didn't have to uh it's okay because of the season that he was in his loved one his loved one told him that it was okay because of the, because of the season that he was in and this is what the lord said this is what the lord said now notice that the man who were receiving the money Inside was inside of the doctor office, meaning that he did not own the building. Man. Check this out, man. Check this out, man. This is what the Lord said. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, man, there was false prophets. There was prophets that 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 was leading God people astray, and God did not even call them. 
call them to be prophets. They didn't even call them to prophesy. And they was doing false, teaching falsely, all types of divination leading the people astray. Man, this is what the Lord had to say about this. The Lord said, some of you are false prophets. I didn't even call you to lead my people. You've been stealing, draining life from my people. Um, you are manipulating my people for your personal gain because of selfish ambition and selfish ambition and robbing my people deceitfully. When they, and robbing my people um, deceitfully when they are sick, in need of true healing, which is in me. For I am only... Let me slow myself down. He said, you've been stealing, draining life from my people and robbing my people deceitfully when they are sick, in need of true healing which is only in me. Thus says the Lord our God, for I am I am for I am the only one that can heal, says the Lord the Almighty. Stop it, says the Lord. Repent. Repent. Turn from this wickedness, for I am coming quickly and I will fight it, fight against you with the sword of my mouth. The Lord said, you have turned my house into a den of thieves. My house is a house of prayer. I will drive you out of my house. Man. And I will, I will throw, I would, I will throw you into the outer darkness where they be, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if you don't repent and turn from this wickedness. And, and release my people. Man, I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Man. The Lord said, my house, my house is a house of prayer. And my house did not come from man. For I am the head of my house, says the Lord. For I am the I am that manner that came out of heaven. I don't function how man function. And I don't and, 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 and my house should not be ran like man would run it. But my house should be ran according to my word and according to the standard that I have set by my word. Says the Lord, our God. Man. That's tough, man. That was heavy, man. That was heavy, man. Man, it scared me, man. It scared me, man. The Lord showed me that, man. That brought me into a humble place, man. Because he used me as an example in it. I was like, Lord, man, Lord. Man. We should never manipulate the people of God, man. The Lord is very serious about it. He's going to deal with false prophets. He's going to deal with the, deal with false prophets that are draining his people, stealing from his people, and manipulating his people. He's going to deal with them. He's going to deal with them. Severely. Let's move forward. Let's move forward along in the vision, to the, in the, inside of the vision. Now, inside of this vision... Okay. The Lord showed the Lord showed two gardens. The Lord showed the Lord the, the Lord showed me uh, on land. Um, me me and my stepfather and we was trying and, and we trying to build two gardens. But the Lord was showing my stepfather as the Father in heaven, right? Right. So the Lord was showing the Lord was showing him the Lord was showing him showing my uh, stepfather as a resemblance as to him in heaven that he was giving me instructions. He was giving me what well, he was he was telling me, giving me a stroke, but he was telling me, um, telling me uh what I could not do. Right, right, right. He was using me as an example to show what he's saying. Man. And this is what he's saying now. Let's see what let's show you what the Lord was saying. Now. Okay. Now, the Lord showed me and my stepdad, man. I'll give him one second. Okay, now let's talk about now. This is what the father said about the two guard on the two land. He said, 
he said, and then my step, uh, and now he, uh, I'm, I'm speaking in the form of my stepdad, but the father showing this over him. And my stepdad said, you can't build two gardens because traffic would not be able to get in, to get through, nor park here. So the father was saying is, so what the father was saying is, you can't, you, he said, you can't build multiple foundations. This is what he's saying to us now. You can't build multiple foundations. He said, you can't build, um, um, he said, you can't build multiple houses on the foundation that I have set. There's only one church. Christ is not divided. There's only one Christ. And you can't build multiple bodies on what I have said. So, there, 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 there's only one Christ. Meaning there should be only one mutual, mutual faith. When you go to one gathering or, to get, or another gathering, you should be able to go there and hear one faith, which is Christ Jesus crucified. Kings of kings, Lord of lords. The gospel. There should you should not go to oh, more than you should not go to her gathering or his gathering. Let me rephrase that. You should not go to any gather of the Lord and hear nothing different than Christ Jesus crucified. He said you cannot build multiple foundations on the you can't but not build multiple houses on the foundation that I have set. Because know that he said traffic would not be, not be able to get through or remain. So he said, because of this, man, people won't be able to get in the kingdom of God or they won't even, they won't even be able, they won't, he said, people won't even, people won't be able to get to the kingdom and they won't be able to endure because you have given them a false substance. You have not given, the, given them the truth about the gospel. You're not giving them the truth. But you have tried to create your own thing instead of giving them the pure truth of my word. You cannot, you cannot create a multiple houses on the foundation that I have set. There is only one gospel, which is of Christ Jesus. And he said, this is what the Lord said. Let's say it again. He said, you can't build multiple housing on the foundation I have set. There's only one church, one body. There's only one body of Christ. For Christ is not divided. But it's one body. Man, Man it's serious. Any function outside of this, people can't, people can't, He said, any function outside of this will lead people astray from the kingdom of God. If they start, they will not remain. If they start, they will not remain. Because you have given them your doctrine instead of my truth. I rebuke thee, says the Lord, the Almighty. Turn from this wickedness, or I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Man, that's heavy, man. That's heavy, man. That's heavy, man. The Lord is very serious about this, man. He's very serious about this, man. Okay, let's go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go four into another part of division. Okay, give me one second. Okay. okay, now, now, let's move forward in the vision. The Lord showed me at the table with my nephew. He showed me the table with my nephew. And we were eating the Subway. And then he was laughing about, um, I can't remember if it was both of us, oh, he was laughing about it was somebody else. At the table that didn't have no food. Man. This is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord said about this. This is what He said to us, man. And man, He would deal with us because we know better. Man, man this scared me, man. Man, 
man. The Lord is very serious, man. And we cannot live this way. This is what the Lord said to us. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. Then the Lord spoke by his spirit and said, man. This is what he said. Then the Lord spoke by his spirit. Man. man, the Lord is going to deal with false prophets, man. man. He's going to deal with false prophets. People that's being manipulated, he's going to deal with them, man. When the Lord return, man, there will be weeping, man. And national teeth, man. Oh, man. That's why we should be careful, man. We should be careful, man. With the word of God, man. Because the same word we use is the same word we're going to be judged by. And he telling this so we can work out our salvation with fear and trembling, man. Okay, here we go. The Lord spoke by his spirit and said. He said, false prophets, you are deceitfully. What did he say? Hold on, let me say. The Lord said, false prophets. You are living deceitfully off the expense of others and laughing at those who hunger and thirst for food at the table. Jesus. Those who are doing this will be removed from the table. Repent and turn from this wickedness or I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Okay. He said, turn from this wickedness. I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Man, we should never, man, laugh at those who suffer, man. Man, Jesus, man. He said, false prophets. He said, false prophets. Man. You are living deceitfully off of the expense of others. And laughing at those who hunger and thirst at the, at the table. Those who are doing this will be removed from the table. Repent and turn from this wickedness. Or I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Says the Lord, our God. Let's move forward. And another thing. In Revelation... The beast, the false prophets, man, and the antichrist, the man of sin, will all be in the lake of fire. So all false prophets, man, will be dealt with severely, man. Man. It's tough, man. Let's move forward. Then the Lord, man. Then let's move forward in the other part of the vision. Then the Lord, I'm in a vision. Then the Lord showed, he showed a leader. He showed a leader that the people only could get it. The people, the people only can get in touch with him uh, one day a week. Now, and then he, 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 the, um, the Lord showed, let me, hold on. The Lord showed me. The Lord showed me the division. The Lord showed in the other inside of the division, um, in the other part of it. He showed me a leader, and this leader, the people only could get a hold to him, uh, one day a week, and then the Lord showed also in his uh, vision, uh, a leader that was generous, who who fed his people every time he was in town, and every time he was in town they would feast. Yeah, and, 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 and whenever he was in time, they would feast. Okay. So the Lord showed two leaders. Okay. One lead, one leader, he showed uh that people could only get a get a hold to him one day a week. Right. One day a week. They, they and they, uh, what did he say? They only can get a hold to him on uh, uh, one day a week. Um they only can get a hold to him one day a week. Um and then he showed the other leader who was generous whenever he was in town. Whenever he was in town, uh, he would have a feast with the people. Man. 
the Lord brought this down. Now, the man that uh, the man that was a good leader, that was generous, this is what the Lord said. He said, you suppose, he used him as an example. He said, you are supposed to be compassionate to my people. I'm afraid. The Lord showed him, this is how the leader we should be, and man, a leader that you should not be. The Lord said, you're supposed to have compassion for my people. He said, I have been compassionate to my people, says the Lord. You're supposed to feed my people when they are hungry with the substance they need to be whole. That substance is me, says the Lord, the Almighty. Let me repeat that. The Lord said, you're supposed to have compassion for my people. The Lord said, I have been compassionate to my people. You're supposed to, pe you're supposed to feed my people when they are hungry. With substance that they need to make them whole. And that substance is me only, says the Lord, the Almighty. You're supposed to be among my people, says the Lord. Not exalting yourself. For I, Christ Jesus... It's the only one to be exalted. For how can you properly, how, how can you properly lead the sheep if you're not among the sheep? For I, Christ Jesus, is always up among my sheep. And, and my servant, my true servant, my true servant, I chose to be among my people, will be there also. For I am the good shepherd. For I am the good shepherd, says the Lord, the Almighty. For the Lord said, I am always among my sheep. And, and, and my servant that I chose, my true servant that I chose to be among my people will be there also. For I am the good shepherd, says the Lord, the Almighty. The Lord said, my, so the Lord said, my true servant that I chose to be among my people will be there also. For I am the good shepherd, says the Lord, the Almighty. That's tough, man. Uh, let me see. Let's go a little bit further. Okay. Now, that was the leader. That was the leader, uh, the leader that was out of town that would feast. And how we should be compassionate, how we should be generous. Man, here go the here go the leader where the Lord uh, talked about one day a week. Man, man, the Lord is very serious about this, man. We we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Not in condemnation, but in fear and trembling. Because a lot of time we will respect him as Savior, but we don't respect him as Lord. And I appreciate, man, him breaking me first, man, before I speak to anybody else, man, because I want to be broken first, man. I don't want to tell nobody else nothing I'm not doing. And we all should live that way, man. We should work it out with fear and trembling, man. This is serious, man. The Lord is alive. He's breathing. He's breathing. He sees everything. Nothing catches him by surprise. It grieves him. He sees everything. And any true servant, the Lord have broken them first. He will use them as an example to, to strike fear in their heart. Man. And I promise you, bro. <laughs> but I tell you, man. It's serious, man. It's serious, man. Let's move forward, man. Man, the Lord is serious, man. Okay. This is the leader that they only can get a hold to him one day a week. Then the Lord spoke by his spirit and said, uh, the Lord spoke by his spirit and said um, uh, about the, uh, the uh, leader who the people could only get a hold to one day a week. But the rest of the week, the leader, the leader could not be found. Then the Lord said they was chasing man, chasing the man for food. OK, OK, let me rephrase this so it can be clearly OK. This is the, the, the Lord speaking right now about, uh, we, well, let me, let me just break it more but clear because I was stumbling over my words. Uh, this is about the leader. 
who they only can get a hold to one day a week. And the rest of the week, he could not be found. And they were chasing the man for food, which is the word. Man. I'm grieved, man. I'm grieved, man. Then the Lord spoke by his spirit the meaning, the matter of this part of the vision, and said, Leaders, stop exalting yourself higher than the people like you are God, casting a stumbling block before them because they're in, you know, because they're. Okay, let me, let me rephrase this. The Lord said, the Lord spoke by his spirit, the matter of this vision. And he said, leaders, stop exalting yourself higher than the people. Like you are God, casting a, casting, casting and being a stumbling block before them because their heart, in their heart, they are turning you into an idol. Man, man let me repeat that, man. The Lord said, Stop exalting yourself higher than the people like you are God casting and being a stumbling block before the people because in their heart they are turning you into an idol. And to the people, stop worshiping men for they are not God. They are only instruments studded to show thyself approved so you may know the truth. Know me because I am the truth and keep your soul from the lies of men. Most importantly, allow you, it allow you to be transformed and make it into the kingdom of heaven and keep your soul out of the realm of the dead. For I am not bound to one day a week, says the Lord, the almighty, for I am everywhere at all times and all seasons. Come to me and I will give you rest. For you have to chase no man for food because anything that a true man of God speaks, it comes from me. He's just an instrument. He's just an instrument. The Lord said, come to me and I will give you rest. For I, for I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Partake in me and you will never hunger and thirst no more. For I will fill your soul, says the Lord, the Almighty. That's tough, man. That is tough, man. That is tough, man. That summed up the vision, man. That summed up the vision, man. And that was heavy, man. That was heavy, man. And man, it's heavy. And and all of this. It's tough because the Lord said, the Lord said, and, and, and you know, see, this is a hard teaching. That's why the Lord said, okay, no one comes to me unless the Holy Spirit draws them. Because, man, we have to understand that the Lord loves us so much, man. But he's serious about his word, man. He holds his word higher above his own head. He don't step outside of his word. So if the God, he's 100% 100% pure, hold his own word over his own head. Man, he's serious about his word, which is Christ Jesus, man. Man. He's serious, man. And this, man, this is why it's important. The Lord had given some final remarks, man. Now the vision is done. The vision is done. But here's what the Lord had to say. This is a word from the Lord. No one can hide from my wrath, says the Lord. No one can stand against me, says the Lord, the Almighty. For I am he that sits on the throne forever and ever. Amen. Man, there is no illegal way you can escape my wrath. There is no way around it. You can't pay your way out of it. You can't buy your way out of it. There is no other way you can escape my wrath. Because my wrath is perfect. I love perfectly. But my wrath is also perfect. There's no way you can escape my wrath. The only way you can escape my wrath is through the redemption of Christ Jesus. So repent before it's too late. For my hand is against all the unrighteous, says the Lord, our God, which is and which, and which was and which is to come. The same as the prophet, the same as the prophet Isaiah walked naked for three years as a sign to the people 
what was going to happen as they were going to captivity. Like so. Like man would not escape my raft. He said, man, like that prophet Isaiah walked naked for three, three years to warn the people as a sign of captivity that what they would say. Like so, my word is a sign to you that you will not escape my wrath. For I am coming quickly, says the Lord. For I have spoken it. For my word does not come back, my word does not come back void. But my word accomplish what it pleases. The Lord said, my wrath is perfect. He said, my wrath is perfect. Why, Lord? Because he said, my wrath does not come from man. Because, see, man fell. He said, uh-uh. My wrath is perfect. My, you cannot escape my wrath because my wrath does not come from man. My judgment, my judgment does not come from man. My judgment comes from me. And my wrath is perfect. And I never fail. He said, my word did not come back void, but it accomplished what I please. The only way to escape my wrath is through Christ Jesus. Thus says the Lord, our God, hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He said, I have been generous to you, O man, through my grace, by my son Christ Jesus. And you have not repented from the wickedness of your hands. You have not turned from the way, from the evil way. You have not turned I repeat, he said, you have not turned from the evil way. You have not turned from the evil way. Therefore, repent for the day of the Lord is at hand. I am, I am, I am going to repay every man according to his works. Whether he is good or evil, he will receive a reward for what he has done. The faithful and true will rise and be rewarded with the eternal life. The unrighteous will, will fall to eternal damnation in the lake of fire, where there be where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I, the Lord, have spoken it, says the Lord, our God, and I will perform it. For my word does not come back void, but it accomplish what I please. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, says the Lord, our God, which is and which was and which is to come. Hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The Lord said, I have, I am grieved over your rebellion. My eyes would not spare nor have pity in the day of the Lord. He said, in my day that's coming, my eye will not spare when I have pity. In my day that is approaching, says the Lord. Why? Why, Lord? For I have given you time to repent. For in that day, it will be too late. The Lord said, for you, worship, for you worship me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Repent while there's still time. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, for when I come, it will be all of my wrath and judgment for the unrighteous man. Man, he said, my wrath will be upon the unrighteous. He said, he said, man, repent while there's still time. For when I come, only my wrath will be upon you. All that is unrighteous, man. The Lord, the Lord our God has spoken it. Man, so as we receive the vision, man, and we look at his final remarks, man, it's important, man. It's important, man. For our Lord love us. He laid down his life for us, shed his blood for us on the cross, gave us all this liberty in him. We no longer have, we have to, we don't have to sacrifice animals. We don't have to do all this work. 
but we have to obey. Now, we we could never fulfill the law perfectly. We could never fulfill the law perfectly. So that's type that so not works by perfect law keeping. No. By works of faith. Because James said faith without works is dead. What works is James talking about? Works of faith. Right? Your obedience to his will. Our obedience to his will. And he's very serious, man. He's very serious about this, man. This is heavy, but I appreciate him. We should appreciate this word for him, man, because this is his mercy, believe it or not. A message like this is tough, it's heavy, but it is his mercy. It's great because he don't even have to tell us this. He can just, but out of his love, who are we for him to be mindful of us? Who are we for him to love us so much? Well, man, your mind just can't wrap, it, wrap, it, wrap it, grasp the, the reason why he would love us sinners so much, man. But he care. He want to save us from himself. Because when he come, he loves us, but he's just and he's going to punish unrighteousness. He said that his wrath will be upon all the unrighteous. All the unrighteous, man. We should take that vision seriously. We should take advantage of him making all things new. And man, man, he dealt with some serious things in that vision, man. False prophets. Manipulative, manipulative, manipulative leaders and all types of stuff in that vision, man. It's serious, church. He's drawing there. He's close. He's at the door. It's a lot of events and everything pushing towards the return of our Savior, man. I'm so excited because he's drawing near, man. But our heart has to be right, man. He said many in that day will say, Lord, Lord, will not answer. He said people going to say, I done this in your name, Lord. I done this in the name, Lord. I done this in your name, Lord. I done that. We done many wonderful works in your name, Lord. Jesus going to say, I never knew you, man. Why, Lord? Because they worshiped you. Worship with their lips. But their heart was far away from you. Notice that he said, Lord, Lord. They said, Lord, Lord. People that believe, people that don't believe. See, a lot of times we'll just look at that as a place of the people who don't believe in Jesus. That applies to the church as well. Why? Because those, those, those who don't believe ain't just going to call Jesus Lord. Somebody that don't believe, don't know Christ, they're going to say he's Lord. He said, they, they said, he said, they said, Lord, Lord. We done many for wonderful things, right? In your name, Lord. So, those people that Say they believed in Christ, but he did not have their heart. Man. Man, works, we're not being weighed by our works, but our heart. By our heart. He said the Father seeks those that worship in truth in the spirit. Well, it's impossible to worship in truth and spirit without obedience. Man. Because it takes obedience. To worship in truth and spirit. It takes obedience. To give evidence of what you believe. Because when you obey. It's saying that I believe you Lord. When you disobey. It's saying. I don't believe you Lord. Every area. That we fall short. Is, because, is, is mainly because. We lack faith in the area. That's why he said he's the author and finisher of our faith. He always increasing our faith because he know we're going to fall short. But there's grace for that. But we also can't take that grace for granted. See, there's a difference between living a lifestyle of disobedience. Hold on, let, me, let, me, let me say this correctly. There's a difference between uh, practicing. There's a different difference between uh, practicing disobedience. And living a lifestyle of disobedience. See. God want us to obey the gospel of Christ Jesus. He know we're going to fall short. But he want us to practice that obedience. And everything in our body be a living sacrifice to obey his will. But a lifestyle of disobedience. Like literally, deliberately disobeying. Leads to death. Because it really shows that you don't believe in Christ. And it shows that your heart is not with him. He said, 
the, the scriptures say, if you say you know him and don't keep his commands, you're a liar. And it said, the only way to have fellowship with Christ Jesus is to walk in the light. Man. It's to walk in the light. How can we walk in the light without obeying the word of the light? Man, Jesus. It's serious, man. Church, I pray that this, this word from the Lord be a blessing to you. Um, it sure blessed me, man. I appreciate the Lord um, sending this down, man, and uh, really giving this to us, man, to bring our mind and perspective, to humble us, to humble us, because sometimes we can get prideful, man, like we can't fall, man. And, man, I appreciate him, man, because they keep us in a humble place, man. And uh, I pray that this was a blessing to your church and and also to bring about urgency and preparing your heart and allowing him to perfect our love, perfect our love. So, you know, we can make it home forever, man, because he loves us. He want to see us, man. He, he going to have a feast when, when we get home with us, that faith and the truth. Man, I'm trying to be at that table, man. <laughs> I'm trying to be at that table with him, you know? Oh, man. And uh, I pray I see all my brothers and sisters too, man. Hey, dap y'all up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to see everybody, though, man. Can't wait to see the Lord face, man. Oh, man. He said his true followers, the ones that love him. He said they love not this world to death unto death. He said they love not this world unto death. That means they live the life ready to get home. <laughs> Church, man, I love you so much, man. I pray that this was a blessing to you, man. Keep your head up, man. No matter what you go through, man, the Lord is with you. You're not alone. He did not leave you as an orphan, man. Um, just attach yourself to him and to focus on glory, man. Just like the Stephen, when they was trying when they were stoning him, when he was getting martyred. He, he wasn't looking at his, his pain, what he was experiencing, but he was looking up at glory. Man, let's focus on glory despite what we go through in this life, man. And know and live a lifestyle ready to get home out of faith, by faith and obedience to the Lord will. And chain our brothers and sisters that are far off and help us, each other that is close, grow together in truth, which is in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Uh, uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your life, Lord. Thank you for redeeming us, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for caring enough to rebuke us and love us at the same time because your rebuke is love, Jesus, Lord. Because, Lord, you see, you chasten those you love, Lord. Thank you for not leaving us as orphan, Lord. Lord, for you chastening us is a sign, a sign of your love. Jesus, Lord, we thank you for loving us, Lord. Who would we be without you, Lord? Where would we end up without you, Lord? We would be dead without you, Lord. So we thank you for introducing us to true life and giving us you, your righteousness, so we could be, so we can be free and be alive and be alive from the realms of the dead, Lord. Thank you for pulling us out of the realms of the dead, dead, dead Lord. And putting us in the realm of life, which is in you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord God, we love you so much. We thank you for your faithfulness, even when we are unfaithful. We thank you for your love and giving us grace when we fall short and we rebel. Lord, we thank you for your love and not loving like we love, Lord. Because if you love like us, Lord, you would have been throwing us away a long time ago. But Lord, thank you for not being nothing like man. Thank you for being so supreme and so high in in, in everything, thank you for being our creator. Thank you for doing everything for us, Lord. For we are not in control of anything, Lord, but our obedience and our actions, Lord. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you. And we just want to say we love you and we reverence you, Lord. For you are worthy of praise, glory, power, blessings, honor, riches, Lord. Have your way, Lord. It's all yours, Lord. Lord, help us to be a living sacrifice to your will, Lord. Let us live to please you and not man, Lord. Lord, let us live to please you and not man, Lord. Lord God, we love you so much. We love you so much, Lord God. Lord God, we love you so much, Lord God. We love you so much. We love you so much, Lord God. Thank you for all that you do and all that you bring and all that you pour out. In Jesus' precious, holy, and match name I pray. Amen. Man. The Lord, man, the Lord, um, the 
the Lord, the Lord showed, the Lord, the, the Lord reminded me of something. The Lord said, please me, not man. Why? Right? Why? Okay. We should love our brother. We should love our brothers and please God. Why? Okay. Because it is impossible to please God without loving your brother. Because if you love your brother, guess what you're going to do? You're not going to backbite. You're not going to be malicious. You're not going to do things to harm him or call his soul to be led astray. Man. And all of this, you loving your brother, treating him right, doing him right, pleases God all in one. So love our brother. Love our brother. Let's go to the top. Jesus gave us two commandments. Love the Lord our God with our with our heart, mind, and soul. So love God and love our brother. Love God. Love our brother. Please, please God, man. Live a lifestyle to please God, man. Live a lifestyle to please God. I love you so much. See you next time.